I'm the CEO of Bella Owens. And I'm the CMO of Isaac Baronis, and together we are possible. So I have a question for you guys. Have you ever ordered something online and been so and ever been so excited for it to just be delivered at the front door? Oh yes. <laughs> <laughs> Well, I have two. For me, it was a sliding mitt that I plan on ordering for this upcoming baseball season and for the summer. And I had asked my dad if, if there's any possible way that I can work with him over the weekends to incorporate some money so I can afford it for myself. Because buying something for yourself really adds value to it when you see it arrive to your front door. So after doing this, I worked for him for about three weeks, earned my money, and whenever he split the shares, I went on to my phone immediately to go buy the Evo Steel sliding mitt. And it was going to take around three or four business days to be delivered. And those three or four business days were the longest times of my life because I just kept waiting, checking it, refreshing, refreshing, waiting for it to arrive. And when it did arrive, I was in school, so I had to wait like six hours just to get home and see it for the first time. So after I got home, I ran to my door, and as soon as I got to the door, it was gone. And I was just questioning everything. Like maybe my little brother's just playing a prank with me. He took it, he hid it, or my dad's pranking me. But I told my mom if we could look at the footage on the ring camera that we had. And it was just stolen right off my front porch because we saw the guy just grab it and take off and run with it. And it just hurt because, I mean, I paid like $120 for the sliding mitt and I worked three weeks with my dad for it and it was just frustrating. So the next day in class, I came to Bella and Kevin, which he cannot be here because he's taking the star test. I came to them, I brought them the problem of porch piracy, which is a very big problem in the world and I have personally experienced it. And for that, Bella gave us his genius all right, so Pots and Locks is a flower pot that discreetly hides your packages in a nice, ordinary looking flower pot. So in here, we have a little package that I can demonstrate this with. So the delivery driver would walk up to your front porch and no porch parent would walk past and think, oh, there's packages in there. So it's perfect for any type of front, front porch. And so you walk up, you lift this up, you put, the delivery driver would put his package in there, and then that's it. Pretty simple, easy, and compared to the other products on the market, there's really nothing out there like this. And how common is porch piracy? I know many have not experienced it in this type of area, but it is very, very common around, along the world. So in 2022, 49 million Americans had at least one package stolen in that 12 months. That equivalates to $2.4 billion in stolen goods just in 2022 alone. And Austin, Texas is actually ranked third overall the highest amounts of porch piracy in the U.S. What makes us different than other companies? Well, for starters, we're the first customizable flower pot on the market that is built to prevent porch piracy while maintaining your own aesthetic. And we're also a lot smaller and cheaper than our competitors, which you can see on this slide right here. Um, Cater delivery box, this is very big. It's, it's to be measured around seven feet, which is almost the size of the door, if you ask me, which is really big and bulky. This blue one door box, it's like connected to your door and it just looks extremely way too fancy for something that is just supposed to prevent uh, porch piracy. And the price difference is also insane. Right here, this one's about $700 and just for this right here, it's about $500. Our customer segment ranges from 45 to 52. We obviously want to target frequent online shoppers, families, or people with many children have a very busy, stressed out lifestyle on the daily, day to day basis. When we sent out a survey asking people what they thought about this product, we really had two main questions. It was how big is it, how much is it gonna cost, and where exactly does the delivery driver know where to drop it off? And to that, we answered with this. This is your basic Amazon uh, checkout page, and at the very bottom, you can see right here where it says add delivery instructions. After you click this, you will be presented with this page right here, and then you will click show more options. After that, you will have a text box where you can write exactly which flower pot it is, where to drop it off, what color it is, and all that additional information. Our sizing and pricing. Our small is 11 by 12, and this, is, this, is, this would be our small, and this would be 120. Our medium, which is 22 by 24, would be 160, and our large would be 44 by 48, and it would be $200. So for our market testing, we distributed a, a multiple of these flower pots to people around Lantana that fit our customer segments. And we really only had one, one, one extra question that came up and it was how, does, how do you prevent someone from just picking up the flower pot and just taking off with it? And to that we answered, at the bottom of the flower pot, there's always a small hole, which you can drill a hole to it and it'll maintain on the ground and you can take the hole off and move from place to place. 
So for our market size, we figured out that in the Lansana region, there are about 11,000 uh, people that frequently online shop. And out of those 11,000, we have 6,201 that are females that frequently online shop. And out of those 6,000 females, 2,000, around 2,500 of them have a graduate degree, which usually earns around 60K to 70K a year, which is our main target audience since that is considered the middle class of the world. And then for our finances, we uh, originally figured out that the media policy would be 160 plus tax, as Brother previously said. We plan on selling 460 to 470 units in the first year, and that'll give us a 73 to $74,000 revenue. The flower pot itself costs $36.58, and to get it on Amazon, it's gonna cost around $40. So if you combine the cost, it'll be $80 to make and distribute it, which is where we got 160 because we saw that around the around this market, you 200, you upsize it by 200% to get your, uh, how much you're gonna sell it for. And between year one, year two, and year three, we, we try to get a, we plan to get a 215% growth rate between those years. And for the sharks, we are asking you for 50K for 15% of our company. Thank so. you for your time, and do y'all have any questions? So why females only? Uh, it was just mainly the target audience that we had because we saw that uh, females are the ones that online shop more often than males. And typically, I would say females are more inclined to, I mean, I'm not saying this is not apply to men, I'm just saying most females typically do like to keep their keep their yards very tidy, plant flowers, do things to make sure their yard looks really fresh. And also, like you said, females do typically online shop more than men, but it does also still like our flight to men. So I'm gonna say my husband is a shopper. <laughs> <laughs> but I would buy the flower pot. So yeah. <laughs> All right, do we have any more questions? How are you planning on storing these? On storing are these? You, are, you, are you on demand? making them or are you gonna make them for that price point is there a warehouse involved in um that? i would say we would have a warehouse just because ours is customizable mm -hmm. so we'd have to make orders to be fulfilled to everyone's request so we couldn't just have them stored unless we actually are going to have a basic model of it just with basic greenery just so people do, do not want to customize it they have access to just buying just the regular um just buying the regular pot but with a small fee, a flat fee of $10, you can customize it. But obviously that's going to vary on like what kind of flowers you want and how many you want and the sizing. But we, I would say we are gonna like pack orders to be filled for specific requests. So in that ask, what you're asking of us, is that cost in there? Wait, explain. So you're asking how much from us? 50. 50K. So is that going to give you the opportunity to distribute? You know how you get it place to place is that going to be through amazon is that um also talking about people involved in making those customs i mean does it include any of that the rent for your uh, manufacturing place or your storage place but could you take that into consideration under that fifty thousand? is that enough to get started Taking i would say that, that would be enough to have a warehouse and to have certain employees to help us um, I would say maybe we should we either are going to have a I know there are companies that do have um, they get um, extra money from kind of startups and going to like um, places to show off their product and they get like donations and startup money so we would either incorporate that into that price and just add on a little more or we would we were actually planning on going to places and getting startup money for our company to be used in that so just not as them as investors. In the long term, how do you keep competitors from undercutting you, say manufacturing overseas and selling it at a lower price point? I would say the quality of our product compared to theirs. I would say our like our biggest pot is pretty big and. We were actually just talking to someone in the hallway that was we were presenting to, and she was talking about how she just bought a pot that was this size, and she bought it for like, I think like 170 or something crazy that doesn't even have like what we have. And so I think when they're doing it overseas, the quality would be a lot, just very diminished compared to ours. And I also think that the pricing of ours here in the US is like typically very, very good, like compared to our competition for now. 
bigger capitalize on that made in work made in America market. Yeah. <laughs> okay. okay, that's that's a that's a marketing plan. So on your competitors, you listed some examples of what they have, and it looks like theirs a lot. Does yours have a locking mechanism on it, or? Ours actually does not. We actually were considering adding that, but the one issue we find with that is we want our product to be more affordable than the other ones on the market. So I would say that's our pretty much really unique value. And so with adding a lock, that would add on the price an extra 20, 30 bucks, 40 bucks. And so we were worried about adding a lock. We might be able to add on a lock in the future when we actually get our customer base down and our common frequently customers that constantly are ordering. But for now, we decided not to just because we don't want to skyrocket the price up. How do you ensure to the customer that the Amazon driver is going to actually read the delivery instructions and put it in there? Because I think my driver doesn't even stop his vehicle. <laughs> um, I would say it typically depends on what service you use. I know there's obviously there's going to be some that kind of just throw it on your porch, but I would say that for us actually we have like a common like delivery driver that comes down like a frequent amount compared like obviously sometimes it'll change but a frequent driver always comes down our street. So I would say I would talk to them probably and I would just tell them hey we have this product we need to put it in here. Um, please and thank you, we can put a sign up, like, et cetera, to make it easier with them. Um, so that's what I would do, but I think it does kind of depend on like the service you use.